In this video, we are looking at finding the lengths of arcs of circles and the areas of sectors of circles. Before continuing with this video, you need to make sure that you are completely comfortable with finding the circumference of a circle and finding the area of a circle. Here is a quick recap. The formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So for this circle, we would need to work out 2 times pi times the radius, which is 5. And 2 times pi times 5 is 10 pi. So this circle has a circumference of 10 pi centimetres, which is approximately 31.4 centimetres. Now the area of this circle is going to be pi times the radius squared. So in this case, 5 squared is 25. That means we have an area of 25 pi centimetres squared, which is approximately 78.5 centimetres squared. If you're not sure about any of these, go back to topics G17b and G17c. The most important skill we need for this topic is to be able to identify what fraction of a circle we've got given the angle. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say I've got a right angle here, so we know that that is 90 degrees. What fraction of the circle is this bit here? Well, hopefully you'd be able to tell me that that is one quarter. But what about if I have something that looks very similar, but actually has an 89 degree angle here? What fraction of the circle have I got here now? Well, hopefully you can see that it's going to be a bit less than a quarter of the circle because this angle here is less than 90 degrees. But what fraction is it exactly? The key is to observe that in a full turn, we have 360 degrees. And this angle is just 89 degrees. So as a fraction of the full turn, we've got 89 360ths and in fact this part of the circle is 89 360ths of the whole. Now that actually fits in with what we saw in the first example because if you think about it we've got 90 degrees and 90 over 360 simplifies to one quarter. We've got 90 degrees out of a full turn of 360, so that's the fraction we've got here. 90 over 360. Let's quickly cover a key word. Sectors are formed when you have a circle and you draw a radius and another radius. Remember, a radius goes from the centre to the circumference. We have these straight line segments. Now, when you've got two of those in a circle, what you create are two sectors. In each case, you'll see a green sector and a white sector, a green sector and a white sector. Now, the smaller sector is generally called the minor sector, and the larger sector is generally called the major sector. So here, the green one is the minor sector and the white one is the major sector. In this next one, the major sector is the green one and the minor sector is the white one. So in all of these four examples, we have got a circle that has been split into two sectors, a major and a minor. On the right hand side, we've got some non-examples. What we've got in this top right example is not a pair of sectors. This line segment here is not a pair of radiuses or radii. What we've actually got is a chord and that actually splits the circle into two segments but these are not sectors. Remember for sectors we need a radius and another radius and they will meet at the centre. That's not happening in this circle. And in this bottom right one we don't have sectors marked on here either because these 
are not meeting at the center. So that's not a radius and that's not a radius, which means this shaded part is not a sector and neither is this unshaded part. Both of them, they're not sectors. Here's the first example. We need to find the area of each sector. That means we need to find the area of this minor sector and the area of this major sector over here. To start with, I'm going to find the area of the circle. Now, this is not my final answer. This is just the area of the circle. And I'm going to leave this in terms of pi. I'm not going to write this as a decimal at this stage. This is just part of my working. Let's now find the area of the minor sector. Well, this is going to be 103 360ths of the area of the circle. So it's 103 over 360 of the area of the circle. So multiplied by 16 pi. If I pop that into my calculator, I get an exact value of 206 over 45 pi. And that is in centimeters squared. Now, if you need to give your answer as a decimal, approximately, you can use your calculator to convert that. And in this case, we get 14 point three eight centimeters squared and that's given correct to two decimal places some questions might ask you to round to one decimal place or to a certain number of significant figures it's up to you to then round your answer correctly next we need to find the area of the major sector and what we have to do is spot that the angle out here is simply going to be 360 minus 103 and that gives us 257 degrees so the area of the major sector is actually going to be 257 360ths of the area of the circle so what we've got here is 257 degrees of the full 360 degree turn. So it's this fraction of the area of the full circle, which remember was 16 pi. Putting this into our calculator, we get 514 over 45 multiplied by pi. And our units are centimeters squared. And if we needed to convert that, into a decimal we could do so using that s to d button again and that would give us 35.88 centimeters squared again that's correct to two decimal places finally we're looking at the same circle again but this time we're not looking for areas we are looking for lengths of arcs now, arcs are parts of the circumference. Here you'll see we've split the circumference into two arcs. We've got a minor arc, this one in red, and we've got a major arc, which is this one in green. Now, the process is going to be very similar to how we found the area of a sector, except in this case, we want to find the appropriate fraction of the full circumference of the circle. So I'm actually going to start by working out the circumference. We know the formula for the circumference is 2 pi r. And in this case, the radius is 4 centimetres. So the circumference is going to be 2 times pi times 4, which is 8 pi centimetres. Now, I'm going to leave that in exact form. I'm not going to bother writing this as a decimal. To find the length of this minor arc, what I want is 103 360ths of this length here. So that is 103 over 360. So that's the fraction of the full circumference, which was 8 pi. And if I pop that into my calculator, I get 103 over 45 multiplied by pi. And that will be in centimetres because I was working in centimetres. So this 
is the exact value of the length of the arc. Now, if we had to give that as a decimal, I would press that S to D button on the calculator, and that would give me 7.19 centimeters, and that's to two decimal places. So the only real skill involved in answering these questions is identifying the correct fraction that we're looking for, and then finding that fraction of the quantity, in this case, the fraction of the full circumference of the circle. Pause the video and see if you can work out the length of this major arc. Here is what you should have got. The major arc outlines a sector whose angle is 257 degrees. So we want 257 360ths. It's 257 degrees out of the full turn of 360. So we want that fraction of the full circumference. And the full circumference, remember, was 8 pi. So we're just going to multiply that by 8 pi. And that gives us 257 over 45 multiplied by pi centimetres. And converting that into a decimal, we get 17.94 centimetres. Again, that is correct to two decimal places.